day and welcome to what? I was gonna say it's you. Uh, good day and welcome to. <laughs> we'll edit that out, but we'll but we'll leave it in. Good day and welcome to the Tag and Brando podcast. My name is Taggart, and this is Brandon. His name must be pronounced with that huge variation in pitch. Mm-hmm. Um. That's how it's speaking, speaking, sp- that's how it's pronounced in his native tongue. Um, welcome to the Brett Tag and Brando podcast. Uh, we, we, uh, we took a little break. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> somewhat, somewhat inadvertent, but we had a lot going on and, um, it was a little bit nice. So I hope you guys don't mind. Sorry. Um, but we are back to let you know we can really shake him down. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that pause. That, that, was, that was almost as good as the, uh, watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's a reference to, uh, what, what is that? Uh, leader of the pack. Right. Old school song, leader of the pack. Um, <laughs> watch out, watch out. Um, thank you. Anyways, uh, so yeah, today is a normal podcast day. We're going to talk some uh, trigger uh, uh, question of the day. We're going to trigger some memories, and we might talk about something that's new with us this week. So, uh, so yeah, how are, Brandon? How are you doing, sir? I am good. I am doing very well. Excellent. Um, I actually, uh, I know we usually like keep our new to the end, but Whoa. I'm I'm just gonna kind of put this out there. Yeah. That uh, I just read a news story that Trey Parker and Matt Stone of South Park fame are uh-huh. looking to. Purchase Casa Bonita. Get out. Not even a little bit. Like, they saying, uh, we want to buy Casa Bonita and treat it right. Feels that it was neglected even before the pandemic. Parker revealed on Wednesday to The Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, seriously. So, uh, yeah, Casa Bonita. Wow. If you haven't seen that episode of South Park from season seven, is exactly as it is in that South Park episode. They got cliff divers. They got <laughs> great food, and it's we were sad that we couldn't get there that this last week because um, they filed for bankruptcy and haven't reopened. But yeah, that makes perfect sense that those guys would want to buy it and bring it back to its former glory. So that's amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, shoot. I guess I'll just end with some lame new at the end. <laughs> well, that's that's not a new for me necessarily. I guess that is just a, uh-huh. yeah. That is just that is just some 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 cool things. So anyway, I'm doing good, especially if that happens. <laughs> that would be crazy and pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I would think mm-hmm. they you know fix it up and uh, you know. Bring it back. The cave was was like better, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and uh, and stuff. No one's been to Casa. Well, yeah. If you don't know what Casa Bonita is, then yeah, you got that episode of South Park that you could watch. Um, but uh, it's a restaurant event place. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's a it. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> I can see why their business plan. Might not have worked over the years, <laughs> um, because it's a crazy concept. But um, man, I could use myself. Myself, I could use me some uh, sopa pias. Oh yeah, dude! Delicious sopa pias, freaking a for sure. Endless, for endless <laughs> sopa pias. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it, it's like chips. You can get as many as you want. Mm-hmm. That's insane. That's mm-hmm. well. There, that's probably where their business plan was the biggest failure. <laughs> the free soap of No, I don't know. 
Um, awesome. Well, should we kick this uh, into gear with the question of the day? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. We are delving into the dreamscape with this question. Oh, okay. We are basically asking, what do you get from your dreams? Like, right. what, what do you see as, like, you know, their purpose or how do you kind of interpret your own dreams? If you have any cool dreams, let us know. What, what do you got? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So, I had a cool dream once, and uh, I remember most of it. Would you like to me re- to relay Please. it real quick as a f- as fun I, anecdote as best, before as we best get you into can, the, yeah, yeah, before we get into the waiter business of dreams. So one time, uh, and you, I, mean, I probably told you this before. One time, I dream dreamt that I was in Leprechaun Hell. Oh yeah, okay. It, um, it's, 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 it's different than regular hell, apparently. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, it's run by the, the leprechauns. It's not where they go. It's, it's where they, uh, it's kind of their dominion, I guess. Um, I just remember mostly that I was in a line with lots of other people and the leprechauns were like, uh, uh, making everyone, you know, single file move up the line until they eventually got to the precipice of a cliff and then they would make you jump off <laughs> into the hot lava the hot the hot and, lava of course in the right and you would then effectively die from hell leprechaun hell um mm. so so i remember in the dream i got up to the front and then and then I was about to jump in, all nervous and worried, because my my second life, I don't know, I don't know exactly how it works, was about to be over. And then I remembered that I was made of something. I don't remember what it was. I want to say lettuce, but I don't think that's it. <laughs> but it was it was something weird, and I okay. was like, oh yeah, and that doesn't burn. So I jumped into. I jumped off the cliff into the lava lake, fell into the, you know, different pieces of lettuce, and then kind of reassembled myself back together. And after that, it was easy to escape. Hmm. Okay. So you, you broke apart, but with your high water content, survived and escaped. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make perfect sense. It's, uh, you know, if it's supposed to be telling me something, I don't think it's, like a great metaphor, but uh, <laughs> that was uh, one of my favorite dreams that I've ever had. I drew a whiteboard drawing of it uh, the next day because it was amazing. Um, so what what do you interpret from this dream? Ooh, see, I don't know. I don't know. Um, um just off of the top of my head, if I wanted to come up with an actual meaning for it, I might say, you know, you, when in life you get into sticky situations that you <laughs> think, oh no, there's no way out of this, it is what it is, and oh, bully. But uh, a lot of times you just think about it in a different, a different light or from a different angle or something, and then you just realize you're lettuce and it's all good. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, or, or more, probably more uh, appropriately, you you find your way through the thing, um, with a little help from something that you didn't think about, you know, mm-hmm. um, or or something like that. I would I would venture a guess that it'd be something like that. Um, I must say, recently, I don't remember my dreams very much, and it, and it's mostly I think because. I don't get time to think about them when I wake up in the morning. That um, is very true, man. That is very true. Like you need that, that kind of 
hanging out in bed, like, where was I? What was I doing? Keep right. To put well, it you into need your that time, yeah. Right to process it over from the sub to the conscious, and so it. And I just don't get that very much. Usually, I wake up because a child is crying or it wants to get out of bed or mm-hmm. thinks that right when they get out of bed they need a banana, <laughs> and so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get that time to kind of process that usually. Um, and so I've got out of the habit of even trying to remember. Though, you know, I remember instances fairly recently that I, I definitely knew I had a dream. But I couldn't tell you what that was or what happened. So, uh, unfortunately, at the moment, I don't use dreams very um uh, well but uh obviously there is a lot of talk about uh about dreams and and dream state and all of that and how it can be useful and whatever so i don't know um have what you, about you well go ahead ask I, was, question. I was gonna say have you I mean, falling into a little lava lake and um, Uh surviving and everything like that, like, have you done, like, the the falling and, like, the wake up before you hit the ground kind of a thing? Oh, for sure. Uh, Have you ever... Oh, for sure. Have you ever hit the ground? No. Because I remember I had a dream when I was... Uh, 16 or 17. It was definitely when I was first driving because it was my first car. Uh, just okay. Just uh, like 84 uh, Honda Civic. And I was driving in the stream up a mountain road and it was switchbacky, just like back and forth and back and forth. And then at one point, one of the switchbacks like gave out and my car was doing like that teetering thing but i was like uh-huh. like the passenger or the sorry the driver's side door had swung open so i'm like literally hanging from the driver's side door um little pull <laughs> like the like. yeah the the handle you pull to close it and right i was like oh my gosh i'm gonna die and so i fell and then um i fell off this the edge of this cliff basically and then i still into didn't wake. a lake of lava yeah uh <laughs> no actually into a bunch of pine trees and oh. so i fell into these pine trees and it's just like <laughs> hitting every branch on the way down kind of a thing and then i kind of broke my fall and then i landed and i hit the ground i was like oh i'm still alive holy cow and then boom my car lands on top of me. And I was Are like, you oh. serious? And then, like, I crawled out from underneath the car. Uh huh. And everything, because it was like, I was still alive. And so then, like, I crawled out from underneath the car. And then I was, like, in, like, this place that I probably went to, like, on vacation or something, you know? Like, it's one of those places where it's like, oh, I recognize this, but I but I don't really recognize it. So I couldn't tell you where it was, you know, something of a childhood memory, but I know I've been there before. So that's why I'm like, I don't put much stock in this whole, like you, you die when you hit the ground because like, you know, that's like saying that, you know, you, you die when you think you die, but sometimes your body doesn't think your, your brain doesn't think you die (laughs) when you hit the ground. Right. It's seen enough right. cartoons to be like, oh no, you just end up with a you know Brandon shape hole in the ground <laughs> and climb out of that, you know, <laughs> and then something else falls on top of you because that's comical, you know. It's like, right, right, so right, and you lift up a small sign that says "Yikes!" Exactly, and the little blink, like pink, pink sound and everything. So, um, so I don't put too much stock into that <laughs> whole whole thing because. Um, it's really uh, for me the, the the creepiest thing is sleep paralysis for sure, 
and that's... Have you ever... Have you had that? Oh, yeah. It's terrifying. Have we... I don't know if we've talked about that on the podcast before or not, but... Um, when yeah. When... Uh, when do you... When have you experienced that, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, the first time I experienced it was uh, when I was in college. Uh, we'll say the first time. Um, I <laughs> went to... I was sleeping on the futon in our uh, apartment. We had an apartment of six men, six guys, I should say. Um, and we, um, I was sleeping on the futon to where my face was to the back edge, you know, the back, like, part of it. So my back was to the rest of the room. And in laying there, like, I woke up. And it felt like somebody was, like, leaning on, like, my shoulder and hip. Like, somebody was kind of, like, pushing, trying to hold me down, right? And so I was like, oh, I don't know who this is. One of my roommates is just being, like, a jerk or something. So I'm just going to push him off me. But then I couldn't move. And so then I started to kind of panic a little bit. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who this person is. I'm going to flip over and I'm going to push him off me. I'm going to assess the situation. And I still couldn't move. And I was like, one, two, three. One, two, three. And it just wasn't happening. And so I started freaking out. Yeah, it was terrifying. And then, like, um, it's happened to me a couple times since then. And people associate, they have, like, the pressure sensation usually because you're trying to breathe faster than your uh, autonomic nervous system is set up your breathing when you're sleeping. So you're in like a kind of panic state. So your brain's like, oh man, we need to like get oxygen pumping. We need to get some, you know, we need to get some extra oxygen and stuff, but your lungs aren't responding. So that's kind of like that feeling of pressure is what, you know, they've they've said really yeah and so a lot of times people feel like they're being held down or weighted down or something um when they have sleep paralysis and then there's the uh the shadow people um which i've also kind of seen or felt where i was like um in my in my room and i felt somebody was like at the door and like rushed to like the end of my bed but i like could like get up to do anything about it and stuff like that so it's it's pretty freaky man <laughs> it's yeah yeah i've only had it happen maybe like four times and one time my wife like was sleeping next to me more recently obviously and she was like and i was trying to say something and i just was like <clears throat> And she just, like, wakes up, like, what is going on? Like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I couldn't move. I was trying to yell, and I couldn't do it. Like, I was like, oh. It's so weird. It's so weird. Dude, that's weird. But it's like, as soon as she talked to you, you, you were like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, because it's, you know, because when you, when you wake up, or sorry, when you're falling asleep and, like, you do something where you, like, are about to, like, trip or fall or hit somebody and like, you know, you jolt your arm or your leg. You've had that happen, right? Uh Yeah. Yeah. It's basically the exact opposite of that. That is like your brain is asleep, but your body hasn't released the chemical to immobilize you. So you jolt awake because you like, you know, stretch your arm out to like catch something or whatever your dream is telling you. Whereas this is like, now you're awake, but your body has, not stop releasing that chemical and so now you're just like asleep or your your body's paralyzed and you can't move it so dude that's weird it's pretty do they do they know why so Mm -hmm. yeah is it a stress thing is it a don't know um yeah i don't i don't know if they have like definitive causes for it and everything i think it's just kind of that like same like the same thing with the uh, um you know with you waking up when you you know throw your arms out there it's kind of just a 
well, your body's just kind of offset, <laughs> you know, like, right, right. So, but, but yeah, I don't know. So crazy. I, I mean, I've had some crazy dreams, um, before I just, I don't know, you know, really where they come from a lot of times. Like, I don't know if there's anything yeah. really significant about, uh, about that at all. So, yeah. Have you, have you, I mean, you don't remember any that you were like, Oh, that's kind of weird. And then that subject or that kind of thing came up later and you're like, Whoa, that's crazy. Um, not, not that I can recall significantly enough. Um, okay. Like, one one of the things about my dreams, more recent, uh, not even more recently, but recently, as I can remember, some is I'm very logical in my dreams. Like, I mean, okay. I I mean, I'm not gonna say like all my dreams are, you know, I'm a head of lettuce and like escaping, <laughs> but, but I can, but at the same time, I still can like kind of have a mindset of like, oh, how am I going to escape this? You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. like, and I'll remember kind of the thought process. So I can see myself if I was, you know, at the edge of a precipice, you know, as a head of lettuce, I'd be like, oh. I'm made mostly of water. I should be fine. Like, that's kind of like right. the thinking I'll have in my dream a lot of times. And I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting. But um, have you have you ever been able to pick up on a dream that you had at, like the night before or whatever and, and like force yourself to dream that again or to, to continue the story like the next day? Mm, not really. Um, I kind of start okay. out like just as I'm falling asleep with some some dream ideas and stuff, and I kind of work on okay. those from night to night, but it's more of kind of a daydream that just kind of takes my mind away from the stress of the day, so right. I then end up falling asleep, but nothing that I'm really like, oh, and we're back to this dream, you know? Interesting. Well, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. um... I had a dream. I don't remember much about it other than we were in a hot air balloon oh, well. when I woke up. And it was me and this girl that I liked from school who, you know, I was a very shy man, so I didn't <laughs> talk to her at all, mm -hmm. right? So I had this dream. And so this was like, I don't know what, why, but I woke up from the stream and I was like, oh, crap. Of course, I wake up at, like, the best time when we're, like, talking and things are maybe, you know, getting good. So, I was like, uh-uh, we're finishing this dream tomorrow. <laughs> so, I don't know I don't know how many days I tried to, to like, do that. Um, uh, some without success, but I do think that I, uh, at some point, was able to kind of continue that. Okay, that's story, good. That story. So I don't know if that's like a lucid dream kind of thing or not, but like I did influence because um, I don't, you know, I don't know if I really determined what happened in the dream once I fell asleep, but I did try to have those, you know, the ending of that and the story leading up to the end from the night before, like playing in my mind as I'm going to sleep. Um, to try to continue that going on. So, anyways. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, if I, have you had any, like, reoccurring dreams or anything? Uh, yeah, I have had a few. There was same kind of time frame in my life. There was one dream that I had reoccurring a few times. And it was kind of the same situation. It was this girl and me. And we were in this, like, ginormous coat, coat closet mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. some, like, random church that I've never been to. And uh, 
and we would we had regressed like we were children like small smaller children and we were just running around this uh weird coat closet that was almost more of a like uh uh you remember like the reading pit in the library at the at our elementary mm-hmm. school right with the kind pillows of st- st- steps kind of on mm-hmm. all sides going down into the middle it was basically like that, um, but you could somehow hang coats in there. I don't really remember <laughs> the hangers, but it was mostly like the kind of a couple of steps like that around the whole thing, and we'd run around it, and uh, and I don't, I don't know. I had that dream multiple times. I'm not sure what that's about. I had a reoccurring dream that I, f- again, feel like I influenced a little bit. It was... Uh, it was Gizmo from Gremlins, and he was chasing me down the street, but, like, as nice Gizmo, you know? Fluffy, and, uh, cute, big-eyed Gizmo. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he had his Rambo stuff on, and oh. he had his bow and arrow, mm-hmm. and he was chasing me down the street, and it was, like, uh, uh, classic horror street. Nighttime with the fog... And you, f- you feel like you're running, but you don't feel like you're going anywhere mm-hmm. kind of thing. You know, it's like it's like that scene in front of the Monty Python where you look back and he's run the same distance every time. Right. And so that... Then you just get stabbed. It was... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then he's just like... Gah! Um, the weird thing about it, it was, it always started with me going into my parents' room in the dream and, uh, looking on the opposite side of the bed, not on the bed, but like, uh, back behind the opposite side of the bed, I I should say. Mm -hmm. And there he was, there Gizmo was sitting there all cute. And I was like, um, but it was scary. I was like, ah, uh, Gizmo. <laughs> and then it was like, it was like a jump cut. And now we're in the street and he's chasing me. And, uh, that's as far as it ever went. I don't know. That was just a fear, fear thing, I guess. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of any other recurring dreams other than that. What's your, uh, how about yourself? You had some ones that pop up? Um, yeah, so I had a recurring dream a while, like a long, 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 long time ago um, about being chased by a killer whale in a grocery store. Oh, my goodness. And, yeah, so <laughs> um, it happened to me a couple nights not necessarily in a row, but enough to where like I can specifically remember and it was I was a little kid and um, very reminiscent of like uh, the the kitchen scene with the raptors in ja- Jurassic Park. Uh-huh. Um, but essentially, I was in this grocery store. a giant killer whale. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, we're talking very cartoon killer whale. Uh-huh. Like, you draw it with like, like the. Like Jabberjaw? Yeah, you draw He's, it like, with walking like. walking on his tail? Well, no, no, no. He was flat on his belly, you know. And, oh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, and so kind of a car- cross between Killer Well and just any kind of, like, monstro, like, cartoon, like, Fudgy the Whale kind of thing. Um, okay. But um, I would be on – we weren't – he wasn't chasing me down, like, the aisles or anything necessarily. He was chasing me more um, – the registers were like really long, like the the conveyor belts were like really long, so like it'd be really hard to see like the other end of them, you know. Um, okay. And so I was on the inside, you know, where all the aisles are, and he was, uh, or she. I mean, let's not be, you know, like the killer <laughs> whale was on the other was on the other side, and it was literally just go flop. And it would look down with just that one, because it could only see with one eye, right? Because <laughs> it just, like, uh-huh. you know, would look down, and then I would, like, scurry to the next one, and it would, like, hear me, and so it would, like, flop, and, like, look down the aisle, 
or the, <laughs> um, the, yeah. And everything like that, like over and over. Um, that's amazing. And it was just, and so it was blocking off the doors cause I couldn't like, you know, make a run for it. Right. Cause you gotta go through the register mm. before you, you know, you gotta check out before you get out of the grocery store. But, um, mm. for my, um, what's it called? Uh, humanities class we had to read the interpretation of dreams by freud and um, oh, uh uh-huh. and do like a little journal entry so i like um i wrote down that dream and then interpreted it like freud would like where well the you know length of the cash registers represents his in it's like his feeling of you know dependence on his you know on his mother and father for like you know, can't like you can't fend for himself like buy his own groceries or whatever, and um, like <laughs> something like of like an overbearing father like always looking down on you, and you know something 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 like all these like made up stupid interpretations that don't oh mean gosh. anything that like uh-huh. and she's like yeah like I could see how you know yeah it's it sounds totally made up and I'm like yeah exactly. So it was funny, <laughs> but that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, man, I think, I think, you know, dreams are fun and everything, but mm-hmm. I just don't know what, uh, you know, really what to, what to do with them at this point. Yeah. What's your take on the whole lucid dreaming astro projection kind of thing? I don't know about astral projection. I think lucid dreaming is totally real. And the fact that you can just take over your dream and just kind of do your own thing with that. But uh-huh. I don't yeah. know about like going out and doing stuff in your dream, you know, and leaving your body around yeah. and stuff. Right. Well, that's weird. I've talked to a couple of people in my life. and One guy was adamant that he could like uh, lucid dream and then once he figured out oh I'm in a dream then he could leave the dream and and put his subconscious in the real world and then go anywhere in the world Mm -hmm. and like hang out while he was sleeping Mm. and I was like that sounds crazy but I mean pretty cool like go visit places that you'll probably never go to. Right. That's amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, uh, he was convinced that it was real. So, so that's cool. Um, and, uh, I had a dude once who was, who was like, I can connect my dreams to, Oh, okay. Other people's dreams. Uh-huh. Um, and he's like, and not everybody, but there's certain people that I'm close to that I'm connected with, like, you know, very strongly, and I can find their dreams and, like, watch their dreams. Um, and he told me a story about an instance where he had gone and uh, watched someone's dream and then had... Uh, kind of brought the subject of dreams up the next day mm-hmm. and this person that he had watched their dream said oh i had a crazy dream last night and then told this story of this dream and he had watched it and he knew everything that that person was going to talk about right and i was like what that's crazy um so again this is second hand like <laughs> i wasn't there i'm not the guy so i can't completely right. say yeah yay or nay but like again he was totally convinced and and i don't know i don't know if there if i think there's something there like that but but uh i mean obviously interesting to, to think about the most convincing thing would be i mean if if you were listening to this you know second third hand whatever would be mm-hmm. if the guy who's who had the dream not the visitor but the actual dreamer you know, uh-huh. the guy being incepted, if you will, was the one that right. was like, oh, I had this crazy dream last night. And it's like, oh, yeah, let me guess, like, what happened to your dream? 
and the guy's like, you, like, we're at the edge of this cliff, and you're like, uh, yeah, and you were a cabbage, uh, I would say lettuce, but yes, <laughs> and, uh, then there was no, some leprechauns, I think you're and it'd be like, what? I think you're right. You know? No, I'm sorry to stop you. I think you're right. I think it was cabbage. Oh. I think I was close with those, but I think it actually was cabbage. That's amazing. Good work. There you go. Um, <laughs> no, for sure. But like, mm-hmm. I think he didn't want to freak him out, and like, uh, so he didn't like do that. But uh, oh, dude, you gotta freak people out, man. <laughs> if you got that power, you gotta freak them out. I don't know if I made this part up or if he actually told me this. So grain of salt here. But mm-hmm. like, I'm pretty sure at one point. He was watching someone's stream, and and they were talking about it later, and they're like, "I'm pretty sure I saw you kind of at the edge, mm-hmm. like doing doing nothing, just like watching what was happening." And, and he was like, uh, "Really? Oh, that's weird." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but like you know, that's indeed what he was doing. So uh, right. <laughs> so there you go. So I don't know. I don't know what I actually think about that, but. Uh, I've heard some interesting stories about that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. No, there you go. Is da 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 triggered memories. Welcome to the segment we like to call triggered memories. Um, today we wanted to reminisce about animals, specifically pets. Pets. Pet animals. We've had a few pet animals. We've had some pets over the years. Um, and I wondered if you had any crazy pet stories uh, in which you wanted to uh, reminisce with us today about. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, um, have I told you the story of the ferret named Ferret? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was a pretty original name, but yeah. uh, other than that, I mean, I know of the ferret uh, to some degree, or is this a different ferret? So my 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 brother had a ferret named Star. Oh, right, back in the day, right, um, right, 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 right. Yeah, and so he had her in this little cage in the basement. She smelled terrible. And right. would run around and freak out my dog and all this kind of different stuff. <laughs> but this story is not right. about her because he had to get rid of her. Ah. So several years later, I um, was leaving my uh, my house, my mom's house, uh, just through, uh-huh. through the garage, and there was this ferret just drinking from the sprinkler. So it just like. As sprinkler would go by, it would like try to like get a drink without getting sprayed in the face, you know, and everything. And we're just like, "What the okay. heck? What is this ferret doing here?" And then it like came into the garage, and you know, I mean, it's not necessarily a wild animal, but you know, ferrets can bite, and you know, you don't know where this ferret's been. So we're like, uh, right. "We don't know what to do." Uh, so we trapped it under a garbage can lid. You know, just kind of put the garbage can lid over top and then um, scooped it into a cardboard box and Mm -hmm. walked around the neighborhood because we figured, you know, somebody had left. This is somebody's fair. Yeah, yeah, somebody had left their door open. They're like out looking for it, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, But nobody we like talked to or saw like knew anything (laughs) about it. And we're just like, what the heck? So we decided to put up some signs uh, for this ferret, like, and everything. But I guess before that, I was like, well, where are we going to keep this thing? Like, you know, what are we going right. to do with this? So I was house-sitting for your family, and uh-huh. I was like, oh, well, I'll just go get uh, the Gillespie, or the, the um, I'll go get their... Um, what's it called their hamster cage because i'm like they had hamsters or gerbils or something right back uh-huh, uh-huh, you had gerbils uh-huh. right yeah, both yeah we had both, both. Uh, different times yeah yeah 
So I'm like, I'll go get their, uh, they probably still have their, their gerbil cage. And so I'll go get that and just leave this, this ferret in there for a little bit. So I ride my bike to your house <laughs> and uh, uh-huh. go into your basement. And what do I find? Well, you guys kept your gerbils in an aquarium, <laughs> right? Right. So it wasn't a, right. it wasn't a cage like I thought it was. It was an aquarium that, and I knew uh-huh. it was that because it had the little water bottle and it had uh-huh. the um, little mirror on there and everything. And I was like, "Oh, this is not what I remember. What I thought it was. Dang it!" <laughs> <laughs> so then I have to ride my bike back up that hill to <laughs> with an aquarium under my arm. <laughs> It was terrible. Way heavier. <laughs> <laughs> but before I left, I stole some kitty litter because I'm like, like you do. I'm like, this thing is just gonna, you know, poop and pee under, um, you know, in this thing, and it's gonna just, you know, right, not go anywhere because it's a freaking aquarium. So I, um, yeah, so I put some kitty litter on the bottom, like, you know, like half an inch of kitty litter or something like that. And I, um, got it back, put it in there. And then maybe I took some cat food too. I can't remember. Or maybe we bought some cheap cat food or something like that. Um, after, you know, we put up signs and nothing, no calls, no nothing. I was like, what are we going to do with this huh. ferret? Because my mom did not want another ferret in the house. And uh-huh. so <laughs> we're like, we got to keep this thing in the garage. And so we kept it in the garage in your aquarium for uh-huh. months, for like, you know, through the whole winter, really. Really? And, yeah. And um, at one point it got like, you know, a little mound of poop and it was, you know, starting to smell and stuff like that. So I'm like, great. I got to freaking clean this carrots, this ferret's cage, this carrot's phage. Right. And so I, <laughs> uh, and I have to clean it too. So I put it in the bathtub, put a little bit of water in there and tried to like, you know, spray it down and whatever. And it's trying to jump out. And again, I, again, I don't know where this ferret's from, so I'm just using like a shoe on my hand to like kind of like keep it at bay <laughs> and everything. Uh-huh. So it keeps jumping out and I just would like push it back in with the shoe and keeps trying to jump out. And then one time it jumped and just like latched both both top and bottom claws like onto the shoe. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> just like shaking it off my, my <laughs> hand and everything. Um, and then I didn't have uh, kitty litter anymore right uh-huh. so i was like okay well i don't have anything i didn't think about this so i'm just gonna put some dirt in the bottom because you know at least it'll kind of absorb the pee at least right uh-huh so um i was like oh well i probably need more dirt than i did kitty litter because it's you know denser and you know all that kind of different stuff and so i put in probably about three or four inches of dirt in the bottom of this thing. Okay. Well, three or four inches added height to the bottom, gave the ferret enough uh, space at the top, or enough, you know, enough height to then push on the the mesh lid, you know, Uh that was just like a screen... And everything, and I had a couple of paint cans on top. Um, and so one night I got home uh, from like band, you know, like a band performance, like super late at night. And we open the garage door, and we just see this little blue streak, just pachoo, one side, pachoo, to the other side. And I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And it pushed the paint can off, and then spilled the paint, and then was running around, just getting paint everywhere. And so and it was like, it was like midnight. So then I got to like clean this ferret up again, like, and like giving it a bath was the worst. And so like, I had to give it a bath like twice 
in like two days oh, because I freaking you know <laughs> did this whole thing. So then we got more kitty litter, and this thing subsisted in our garage with no other amenities really besides water. It lasted on cat food some dog food, and some goldfish crackers for, you know, six months. Wow. Until this girl from work, or from school, took, like, pity on it, and she, like, came by, and she got it from, she took it from uh, home. Um, she spent, like, $250 on it with this, like, cage with these multiple levels that it can, like, run up and down, this little hammock, like, this, like, you know, nice food, like all this kind of, all the stuff that the uh-huh. pet store tells you you need. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and everything. So $250. And then she like comes to school on Monday and she's like, your ferret's dead. And I'm like, what? And she like, it took a while for her to like admit it. But finally she's like, it like ran down one of those little ramps and like broke its neck. I was like, oh my gosh, I kept this thing alive forever. <laughs> and didn't even give it a name. We just called it Ferret. <laughs> Ferret. And like, kept it alive for months, and you kill it in three days. What? <laughs> yeah. So it was like this, it was, the the house was too fancy, and it didn't know what to do, and it ran down a ramp, and, and, and crashed and broke its neck. Yeah, exactly. It's like first taste, what? first taste of space, and it like couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah, I only used to one level. Yeah, exactly. I'm used to just pushing either well, kitty litter it, or dirt. It jumped <laughs> like I mean, it jumped out of its cage after uh, pushing the paint off, and that was you know a good probably three and a half feet, like you know, to right, the ground. I right. don't know. It was crazy. So. Oh, yeah, so... Dude, that uh, is... R.I.P. I ha- forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your crazy... Do you know the story of my horny toad? I, I don't remember what happened to the horny toad, no. Well, there's some s- similarities between your story and this story. We found it in my yard. Oh, okay. So this was like a legit lizard... Mm-hmm. A horny toad lizard guy, which um, has to be someone's pet because horny toads aren't just like I, roaming around. Exactly, and that's exactly what we thought too. But I, I don't remember if we uh, campus the neighborhood with flyers or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember that, um, but I'm sure we asked around because my mom would have been like, "Whoa." Can't keep someone else's pet. Um, so we, um, but anyways, we ended up, I ended up keeping him. I had probably that same aquarium, uh, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, we got like it's a. Triple a, action uh, aquarium. We got some set pieces in there for him. And I think maybe a heat rock and like some water and whatever for him to chill in if he needed to. And, uh, you know, I had that guy for a, a good little while, probably mm-hmm. three months or something. You know, we'd buy him crickets and, uh, you know, he would eat them or he wouldn't. And they'd just be jumping around and jumping on his head. And I was like, dude, why? <laughs> eat it. Eat it. Man. Why you let that guy do that to you? You know, uh, kill that cricket. He's your food. Anyway, so he was never very... Uh, Active, it's pretty uh, kind of a bump on the log, as it were. Um, mm-hmm. But he he let me pick it up and whatever, and so I pick him up every now and then and take him out and watch him sit on the carpet and do nothing. Right. Um, but uh, one day I went in there and I went to pick. I went, I went in just not even. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna pick him up and see what's going on. Um, I picked him up. And he's stiff as a board, freak <gasps> out, dro- drop him back in, you know, just, right. just knee jerk, drop him back into the cage. The man's gone. He's dead. Oh, um, man. 
and I don't, you know, to this day, don't know what, what the issue was. If, uh, you know, if he was sick or something and he wasn't eating his crickets or whatnot. Mm hmm. But, um, but yeah, it scarred, scarred me a bit. We buried him in my backyard, um, uh, with, uh, you know, the gerbils and the hamsters. <laughs> right. Which are buried, buried back there. Mm-hmm. A little grave site. But, um, yeah, it was kind of weird. Never wanted a lizard, really. Right. I never really wanted, wanted one since, but, uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, I got a quick other one, if you if you don't mind. Oh, please. Uh, Mine was, like, forever, so go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I had, um, okay, so I was visiting my friend. I'm like, this is visiting. I went to visit my friend in Utah. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember where we were or what we were doing, but when we came back out to the car, there was this cat that was hanging around, like, the car. And we were like, what's with this cat? What's his deal? Um, the cat's a small guy. Like, it's a small cat, so we figure he can't be very old. Okay. You know, he's practically a kitten. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, no. No one's around here. Like, I don't know if we were at a restaurant or something. I want to say we were. And mm-hmm. we were in the parking lot, and this cat's just, like, chilling. And we come, we are like, hey, cat, whatever. And he's like, hey, what's going on, guys? Like, I'll be your friend. And uh, he just wanted some some love or whatever. So we didn't know what to do. So, we're, you know, we're like 20 or like young 20s or, or maybe maybe before that. Maybe, no, nah, it couldn't have been 20. We were probably late teens, late teens probably. Oh, okay. Um, we were just out there for like the summer, like, you know, we went out for a visit or whatever, mm-hmm. him and me. And we, and so we found this cat and we're like, what are we going to do with this cat? And, uh, we couldn't just leave him. So we took him. So we took him with us, drove him back to Colorado from Utah. We were out <laughs> in Utah. We wow. drove him back with, with us and, uh, and and my friend was like, there's no way I can keep this in my house. And I was like, well, I have a cat at home. Mm-hmm. She'll probably hate him. Yeah. But like, oh, she, you know? she, was, she was fun, but she was mean sometimes. <laughs> she could get mean. Yeah. And so I, I brought this cat home and I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't have, I didn't know what to do. And we had, we found this cat and it was clearly lost and, and, small and i was like it's gonna die probably if we leave him out here Mm -hmm. so so my mom was like okay whatever let's try to take care of him so we like i mean we like took him to the vet and i think he had a couple things we had some medicine that i had to give him and uh i named him captain geech (laughs) um (laughs) and his and his friends the shrimp shack shooters Shrimp Shack Shooters, named him Captain Geach, yep, from the, uh, in reference to the movie, ten, uh, no, 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 uh, That, <laughs> that thing, thing You Do, excuse me, mm-hmm. That Thing You Do, that it was, that was their band, uh, when they were in the movie, in the Anita movie, Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack Shooters, anyways, so, so Captain Geach, and, and since then I've thought, man, if you're gonna have a pet, give him a title, you know? <laughs> Right, make, make him feel important. He, man, that guy was a captain. Um, mm-hmm. Hated water, but that man was a captain. So, um, my cat hated him, and I was af- we were afraid that she would like hurt him really bad. <laughs> so he basically had to hang out in my room, um, and you know he's a young cat, so he did not care about the whole "wait, you're gonna sleep later than me" thing. Oh right! Every morning at about four a.m., he'd wake up and he would come and pounce on my head. <laughs> I'm laying in bed, I'm dead asleep, mm-hmm. and he would go Meow! and like basically attack me. And I would get, and I'm, I'm in the middle of sleep, right? So, 
uh, you know, Peter don't come after me, but I would like pick him up and like throw him off my bed and go, like, get out of here, get out of the sleigh bed. Just to the floor. Um, I mean, he's, he's got it. He's, he can yeah, land it. He landed on his feet most times, probably. I didn't look. But, uh, anyways, it just became pretty uh, apparent that if I want to sleep, he can't be in my room. And if we're going to keep him, he has to be. So we found him a home for him somewhere. But, uh, yeah, it was cool. Cool cat for a little bit. Captain Geach. Um, there you go. All right. It's weird. I mean, finding animals, like, yeah, and just feeling you, you got to take care of them. You know, <laughs> just, like, do what you can to, yeah, to give them. But, but you're not, like fully prepared and you know so you, you can't like give them the, right. the, the good life that they deserve, deserve. so I mean I, I tried as, as best you know we tried as best we could to to help these things out and at least Captain Geach went to a good home <laughs> good yeah. I think it's a good story to He's end totally on good. <laughs> yeah good good he didn't die I mean he probably did but it was a while ago now. But, right, uh, right. He lived a good, happy life with a good family. Mm-hmm. As far as I know. Right. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, man, what's, uh, what's the new <laughs> with you this week? Um, so, we had a little bit of a party um, Ooh. and everything. Um, you were there. I'm pretty sure. I was there. I was there. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Well. Yes, sir. Um, one of the things that we uh, want to do for this party is we we were going to have ribs. And mm-hmm. um, we weren't sure how many people were going to show up because um, that's, you know, how it always goes is what was our, you know, uh calculation we would usually say like uh expect only um 10 percent of the people you invite right <laughs> something to that nature you, some, uh, yeah some kind of statistic yeah. i don't remember how many percentage but, wise, but yeah 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 but yeah I mean, you like, don't i mean you invite all these people and you're like they're not all those people are coming for sure yes exactly so I invited a bunch of people but um I was like, okay, well, I'm going to make ribs for all these people, but I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot and it's mm-hmm. going to be, um, <laughs> kind of crazy because not only do I, do I have to make these ribs, but I don't have all the time in the world that day, first off. And then I right. don't have the, all the equipment that I need, um, out there in Colorado. So I got to start these things here in Utah. So I bought, um, I bought 11 racks of ribs, um, and everything. And, uh, my wife was like, when are you going to buy the ribs? Like, when are you going to start the ribs? When are you going to, and like, I was telling her, I'm like, I need to like get these like as late as possible because we have to like transport them. And you know, this thing's not till Saturday. So I'll, like, if I get them, like, a week in advance, then that's a week longer that they're not being cooked and eaten, you know, and, uh-huh. and everything. And we didn't have room in our freezer to, like, you know, keep them for, you know, like, a week beforehand. So I bought them basically on the Saturday before we left, and then I cold smoked them. So I have this little, oh. um, it's called, like, a like a smoker maze. And what it is, is it's basically just this little, uh, stainless steel, uh, kind of cage that has a track, like a tread in it, uh, that kind of goes in a zigzag pattern and you put, uh, wood chips or wood pellets in there and it burns in this kind of back and forth zigzag, um, to give you smoke for up to 12 hours. Right. So, Interesting. um, on my, on my smoker grill, I could only fit like five, 
five or six at a time. So I had to do two batches of these where I smoked them for like eight hours each and stuff. So, um, Whoa. Yeah. Crazy. And when I say it can only fit like six, um, that's basically like putting like a couple of little level things in between it, you know, and like, um, trying to get some air gaps in between the racks, but it was like chocked full. <laughs> like it was like, like slammed full. And so, right. Um, smoked them and then wrapped them in tin foil and then threw them in the cooler, um, uh, or two coolers that we were going to drive out. And so I decided to do, uh, dry ice on there. Um, uh-huh. One, one of the big benefits to doing dry ice as opposed to regular ice, um, the wet ice, if you will, is it gets way colder, obviously. Uh, carbon dioxide, especially cold carbon dioxide, is heavier than air, so it displaces, right. if you put it on top, it will displace all of the air in there, so it'll actually like help reduce oxidation a little bit and it will um, help keep it cold because all of the air will be cold basically. And um, also, you know, you go, it's not all soggy when you get there, you know, Uh, right. Which is a huge plus. And so then I braised them for about four hours each um, a couple days later. And then on Friday or on Saturday, when we actually had the thing, it's when I threw them on the grill, slapped them with the barbecue sauce, got that crust, you know, the bark, or if you will, and then uh, served them up. But it was kind of a touch and go there for the first, like, 24 hours after, because I'm like, these things have been a week being pretty much refrigerated, but maybe not as refrigerated as they could be. And yeah. transported over state lines and everything. I really hope I just didn't food poison like 50 people. <laughs> 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 so at like 24 hours, I was like, all right. Oh, that's amazing. I haven't gotten any reports. You were fine. <laughs> Your family was fine. Everybody I right. talked to seemed okay with it. So pretty sure we... we we passed. Oh, that's but hilarious. it was but it was kind of it's kind of scary. Like the whole time, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing like I'm trying to do what I can. Like I take them straight out of the fridge and put them in the oven. I put them, take them out of the oven, and as soon as they cool, I put them back in the fridge and all that kind of good stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, it could just be like that something just gets in there, you know, and and just. Right, wreaks wreaks havoc on everybody, but I think I think we're all good. So great, man. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> so you're new as like I almost but didn't poison anyone. I had I had the potential. I mean, you know, <laughs> and everything. So, but yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, what's your new? <laughs> well, for your shindig, my whole family came in and. Mm-hmm. Um, We've been hanging out with them um, this weekend. Cool. Myself and my wife and my oldest sister and my youngest sister and her husband Mm -hmm. went to a concert. Oh, okay. An actual concert. Thanks for the invite. That's fine. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, did you want to come? Um, so <laughs> no, sorry. So no, sorry. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. But an actual, you, you an was, actual in-person concert. An actual in-person concert where uh, not only that, a, a sold-out concert. Ooh. Every seat was spoken for. I will say we had a couple of seats around us that people didn't take. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether they were there or not, I don't know. But it was a sold-out concert. We bought the tickets the day that they went on pre-sale. So it wasn't even the sale. I mean... All the tickets What is really pre-sale if it's not a sale? Well... But anyway. Well, no, I'll tell you. 
<laughs> so the t- the t- the pre-sale tickets were only open to people that were are part of their email list. Okay, that's that's fair. There's got to be some kind of like pre-qualifier or something. Right. Yeah. So if you have, you know, uh, if you get the emails, then you got the link for the pre-sale, and those are the only people that had access to it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's true. You. Per- I think you could have just forwarded it to your friends and then they could access right. it as well. Because the thing is, I'm pretty sure all those tickets sold out that day mm-hmm. for the concert. I might be misspeaking a little bit, but it was sold out pretty dang fast. I want to say, if not in a one day, a couple days, a few days, uh, sold out completely. Every ticket sold expensive crazy definitely one of those um, things where it's like okay we gotta we gotta all decide on this now and we're all gonna buy tickets or i'm gonna buy tickets for everybody or else or, it's not gonna yeah, happen my, my my older sister kind of spearheaded it. she saw she got the email mm-hmm. and actually saw it i get the emails but i didn't see it mm-hmm. um but she got it and she was like well we do we should do this we're gonna be out there it'll be great it was at red rocks um mm-hmm. if you're familiar with that venue it's awesome. And uh, her, my younger sister, and her husband, they'd never been to a concert at Red Rocks. And I was like, well, we got to go. Um, and so, um, yeah, we basically waited for that Monday when the pre-sale went on, and she went on the website as soon as it was open, like mm-hmm. the minute that the pre-sale started. And some tickets, like the the tier of tickets that we wanted to buy, were already sold out when she got on. I don't understand she how that happens. Got on at the beginning. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's there right then. They're mm-hmm. ready to go, and and it's a little bit uh, accentuated because concerts are just coming back, and people are like, well, you know, if we're doing it, we got to do it. We got to go now. Um, and so everyone, you know, more people than normal probably are, you know, this is Mm -hmm. statistics by Taggart, um, (laughs) but more, more, more people than who would normally be like, yeah, let's, you know, get on this concert, uh, are hitting it hard because, you know, we haven't had some stuff like this for quite a while. So, um, so anyways, it was a band that I, it was Guster, for those people who uh, know Guster. Not a ton of people do. Guster's awesome, and they've been a band since the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been a long time at this point. I think he said <laughs> they've been a band for, uh, you know, if you count the first day that they got together and played some music, 29 years and 11 months, I think is what he said. Something crazy like mm-hmm. that. And, um, so, um, you know, and that was in college when they were in college in like the nineties. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they're not, you know, too much older than, uh, than us, but, uh, but some, um, but anyways, it was excellent. We had a great time and it was not, uh, they played with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. Oh, Wow. Uh, they had the That's orchestra cool. come and they played some of their tunes with the orchestra and that was very awesome. And it was, you know, it wasn't like a, Hey, we just released a CD and we're going to play all the new songs. <laughs> um, it was, it was like, Hey, this is an event. We've, the, I mean, these guys had never played, Red, they played Red Rocks, but they never headlined mm-hmm. Red Rocks, uh, uh, ever. And so to like first show out the gate, basically 2021 <laughs> for first thing, this with the orchestra sold out show, um, it was crazy. And you could tell they were, they were almost as much in awe about it than we were, but they were great and they played good. And we heard a lot of songs from all different eras of their music, you know, spanning the whole 30 years 29 yeah. gamut mm-hmm. and uh it was great it was great my wife and i had seen them before um i had this was my fourth time actually seeing them but i saw them with my wife when she was pregnant with my son 
Oh, that was our pregnant concert that we went to? Okay, <laughs> we've done that for both of our uh-huh. for both of our children. So, like in utero, this is the concert that you saw, um, okay. and we did one with our our daughter as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so anyways, it was uh, it was great. I hadn't been to a concert with my sisters before, and so it was cool. It was really cool. That's to a lot go of fun. to. A band that you know, uh, my brother and I didn't doesn't know them like super well, but he knew a couple songs of theirs. But like you know, the four of us, um, my two sisters, me and my wife, all really love them. So it was pretty cool. So there you go. That's what's new with me. No, I mean that glad it's getting out there. It's happening again. Um, Life, man, see, it's things, crazy. Things are getting back into the swing. Yeah, as much as as much as we could hope, I I think, and so, right. We'll see. We'll we'll see how, how it continues. But I'm glad. Yeah, you guys you guys had fun and took that took that opportunity because that's the thing is, it takes some forethought, you know, <laughs> before you even like. Oh my gosh, have we that wouldn't weekend. have done it without my sister kind of spearheading things and. Right. She bought all the tickets and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just so that we could do it all at once. And it was great. But it came together and it worked really good and we had a glorious time. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah, hopefully everybody else had a glorious time or just a fun time on our, on our, listen to our podcast and everything. Yeah, we uh, we appreciate it. We are back on track. Get yeah. ch- turn it turn it out. We got some good feedback on our podcast, so thanks to all the those listeners out there. And yeah, we appreciate you know you guys listening. And we appreciate the the patrons out there doing that. We appreciate those guys going fishing. We <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah, so uh, share it with somebody if if you can, and you know, um, we are we're eager to, to get any feedback at tag and Brando uh, at Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, all those all those good places. We'll um, yeah, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.